And I'm, Madam Speaker, the reason we do that is because we never get it right. Every election cycle, there's a problem. And I think we need to interrogate the deeper issues that bedevil our election process. Madam Speaker, I said it yesterday and repeat that I've written a book called Rig or Be Rigged. And uh, in the book, as the title suggests, is that in the Ke Kenyan elections, you either rig or you are rigged. We don't give any other option. And because we have that sort of mentality, we must always come back to try and get a fair system. And I think unless we get a third option, which is elections that are done fairly above board, that I don't have to be chasing your, your bag the way I was doing in Bomas to see whether you have hidden things in the, in the bag, whether you are stealing our elections. It is actually very backward that we don't have that much faith. And because the system is structured in a way that we should not have faith. And one of the things I say in my book is that our system of elections is nascent and many people do that very deliberately both at the party level and at the national level. Because we don't want fair elections. We just want to ensure that the smartest, the person who is the most crooked, the person who is the most uh, uh, moneyed, wins the elections. And therefore, the people who may be able to win the elections fairly have to go a thousand extra miles to get that. And Madam Speaker, I therefore want to say that even though I support all these amendments that have been brought up, unless we change the reasons that we are having this situation, which is actually our software, as individuals in this country, then every election cycle, there will always be an amendment to the, Constitution, uh, to the Election Act. Right now, we are including expanding the panel, which is a good thing. One, to be more inclusive. And two, to also have the voice of the political players, which is a good thing. But that is not enough, Madam Speaker. I will go back again to the issue that we need to change our own mindset as individuals and think about the legacy we want to leave in this country for our children. Do we want our children every election cycle, either pre-election, to be fighting and be displaced depending on the alignments that are in this country, so that if the alignment doesn't work ethnically, then there will be ethnic cleansing and killing and displacement, or post-election, that you see the number of people who are killed and shot by the police due to protest. Is that what we want as a country? We may be able to go through that process, us, but I don't think that is something we want to bequeath to our children and our grandchildren. So, Madam Speaker, yes, as again I've said, I do support, but we really need to do our rethinking as a country. Secondly, I would want to also speak on the issue of the delimitation of the boundaries and the reason why we must have a, 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 a commission in place. Uh, it's because, Mr. I notice uh, you've changed. Uh, I do acknowledge. Uh, so you are no longer Madam Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say that because uh, there are constituencies with, uh, very fa that are very fast growing in terms of population and therefore, of course, registered voters, like my constituency. And I'd want to uh, therefore urge that because of that, we need a delimitation. My constituency probably is right for another uh, constituency. And because the last time our numbers didn't constitute enough numbers for another constituency, but perhaps now we may probably uh, have the sufficient numbers. So we need to look at that. And even if you are not looking at that, there are also other factors that are also considered, including um, you know, you know, other community of interest and all that. And those are issues that apply especially for minority communities like the Subas. Mr. Speaker, I would want to say, though, that I am very uh, saddened that uh, even for the speakers who are speaking here, we don't prime the issue of the two-thirds gender rule. And even in the NARCO report, we have not primed it. We are actually an embarrassment in the region that even countries that are still struggling have better gender representation in their parliaments. 
And I don't know what happened to us as Kenyans. People usually challenge us that in Kenya we are very intelligent women, very strong women, but when it comes to representation, other countries are doing way much better than us. Let's just give an example of here our, country, our uh, neighbor, Tanzania. Their president is a woman. The Speaker of Parliament is a woman. Majority leader is a woman. The numbers in Parliament is more than two-thirds, I mean one-third for the women representation. But in Kenya, all we can pride ourselves is speaking better English, like English is a measure of uh, intelligence. Let us learn Kiswahili, let us learn English, but our greatest measure we know that women is a very great part of this country. That is when we should be priding ourselves as a country that we have made progress. We cannot be making progress in speaking a lot of English. But Mr. Speaker, the other issue that I think is uh, of a lot of concern that I've not seen us address here is we were very excited when we were saying we are now bringing technology even into our electoral process. But is Kenya really ready for a technological process in election? Is Africa ready for a technological process in election? I have been privileged to at, uh, go to some countries as an election observer. I will not mention those countries now. But Mr. Speaker, I can tell you the countries in Africa that we sit and go through the electoral process. There is no violence. People vote nicely. And at the end, the results are announced after five, six days. And then uh, the observers using the old technologies or the old system will come and declare the process was very free and fair. There was no violence. What violence do you expect in a, a computer system? I don't know what the computer terminology, but I wish I knew. I don't know what would be fighting with the, the other inside a, a, a computer for us to know there is, a, is it a virus? Yeah, maybe there is a virus fighting another virus for us to know that the process was not free and, and fair. So one of the things that I wish, I don't want to get to delve in because we are progressing as a country. I don't want to take us back. So I don't want to go deep into that issue. But I'd want us as a country, if we really and truly want to forge ahead, is to look at whether we truly are ready for technology. I'd want to say one of the countries that I went to, Mr. Speaker, that had excellent elections, and one of the countries that has been touted as one of the best countries in Africa. And when I went to that country, the electoral process was open. People vote in the open outside classrooms in Ghana. And the results are counted in the open. There is no technology. But the moment you bring in technology, it's just that we have prov provided an unviolent system of, uh, of, of rigging, which is OK, because now we did not too many people are killed, but it's still rigging. Uh, but it is basically meaning that we are losing on our democracy. I want to support and once again thank the committee for taking the step to move us just a little bit forward. But we still have very serious issues in our electoral process that we need to deal, to deal with. I support. Uh, where is the Honorable Mogaka? Mogaka. Mogaka. He's not there. The Honorable uh, uh, Duku Kwenya. Uh, 